I hope that's not our dwarf. The three of you set off to the south, worried about the shortage of water. Stubb tries to offer some comfort by saying that you should reach Stonebridge in less than a day. He says that he is surprised that he hasn't seen any of his fellow dwarves by now. Oh yes we have, says Redsmith solemnly, but you won't want to see them like that. He points to a boulder about 50 meters west. The blooded body of a dwarf lies propped up against it, his head slumped forward and he is motionless. His axe is still in his hand and whoever or whatever attacked him cannot be far away. Stubb runs up to the dwarf, wailing in grief. It's Mori the Ironsmith, he says. This looks like the work of hill trolls. Let's bury Mori and get to Stonebridge as quickly as possible to tell them this terrible news. Here, take Morris, Mori's water bottle. He won't need it now. You gulp down the water and at last refreshed. You gain one stamina point. You lose one, you get one back. How nice of them. After marking Mori's grave with his axe and helmet, you set off again for Stonebridge. Night is approaching and you decide to camp in the shelter of some rocks and bushes, despite Stubb's plea to carry on. You build a fire and settle down to sleep. Red Swift takes the first watch. Come on, sometimes lucky. Always lucky. Stubb wakes you in the middle of the night after completing the second watch. The rest of the night passes peacefully, and in the morning you are able to continue your journey to Stonebridge. Are those hill trolls? Hmm. By mid-morning, Stubb has become quite excited, knowing that he will soon be home. Seconds later, the thought of his dead friend Mori depresses him, and he shakes his fist at the unseen hill trolls. An hour later, and you see distant wisps of smoke rising into the sky. Stonebridge! yells Stubb. He starts to run ahead of you, but suddenly stops when he sees a party of six hill trolls marching towards his village. Screaming a battle cry, he raises his axe and charges at them. You cannot leave your friend to fight them on his own, and run forward to fight at his side. Two of the hill trolls turn to fight you. Really? It's like a unit of six. <laughs> Why would only two turn to fight us? We must fight, and we will win. Aha! I outskill them by three. This should be too easy. Defeat the first hill troll, now you must face the second. Well then, poor hill trolls. Stubb's desire for revenge spurs him on, and he quickly defeats two of the hill trolls, and then helps Red Swift dispatch the remaining two. He does not stop to search through the trolls' belongings, but heads straight for Stonebridge. You follow him into the village where he is greeted by all his old friends. However, you soon discover that an air of gloom hangs over the dwarves. Even though they know that the hill trolls are gathering to attack their village, they have lost their will to defend themselves since their fabled warhammer was stolen by King Gillibran. Stubb is concerned by their loss of morale and takes you to the inn to meet his friend Bigleg. He learns from Bigleg that an eagle took the Warhammer, but dropped it over Darkwood Forest. Yes, yes he did. Ah, uh, so many tie-ins, Jesus. Then we must find it, Bigleg. We must leave immediately, says Stubb, forgetting his own troubles. He stands up and extends his hand to you, saying, Well, friends, I'm sorry, but I will not be able to offer you a hospitality after all. I hope you understand. He walks out of the inn with Big Leg, and that is the last you see of the jolly old dwarf. Red Swift sighs and suggests Moonstone Hills straight away. Besides, he says, he has something important to tell you, and in a way it is fortunate the stub will not be around to hear what he has to say. Intrigued by Red Swift's words, you leave Stonebridge, heading east along the bank of the Red River. While keeping a lookout for hill troll patrols, you cannot help wondering what it is that Red Swift has to tell you. Hidden among the trees to your left, Red Swift suddenly spots the three hill trolls sharpening their weapons on a stone. So many tie-ins. So many plot lines that they're twirling and whirling together. We are lucky. The hill trolls do not see you and are able to slip by them unnoticed. Good god, this game continues. Even though it is quite cool walking along the bank of the Red River, you start to sweat and feel dizzy. 
You look at Redswift, and he, too, looks far from well. His face is white and his eyes look dark and sunken. Sit down, says Redswift in a laboured voice. You gratefully stop and collapse onto the grass, quite worried now as your heart is beating very fast. Do you remember walking through the caverns of the Snow Witch and arriving at a door with a piece of parchment nailed to it? You could not understand what was written on it, and asked me to read it. It was a death spell, and we are now both doomed. It is starting to work on us sooner than I expected. We have to find the old man of the hills that they call the healer. Only he can save us now, but I fear it may be too late. Already. My legs are so weak, I don't know if I'll be able to stand again. We did not meet any dark elves or get any potions of health, so that's not good. Oops. Uh, plenty of stamina. The game won't just kill us right here, surely. You try to stand up, but your legs feel stiff and heavy as iron. You look at Red Swift. He also tries to stand up, alas, without success. As you begin to lose consciousness, you realise that the Snow Witch has had her revenge. Your adventure ends here. <sighs> really? You make us come all this way. Dark Elf. I, I... I don't remember encountering any Dark Elves in either of my runs so far. But that is ridiculous. Alright. Uh... <laughs> Looks like we're going to take another go around. I think I need to start keeping a map. I'll be back in a few minutes. Alright, so let's figure out just where exactly this Dark Elf is. So what's my earliest bookmark? Okay, so that's, that's the Yeti. That's uh, slightly later than that. Okay, so this is the Mountain Elf. Now, saving him is probably a good thing, so let's try this one first. The Mountain Elf looks at you in disbelief and says, Nobody of good heart would wish to join the Snow Witch. I am only here because of this. Throwing back, throwing back hood, the Elf reveals a metal collar around his neck, which glows in the semi-darkness. Only the obedience collar makes me serve her, he continues in a dour voice. If you wish to reiterate your desire to join the Snow Witch, turn to 22. If you'd rather change your story and tell the elf that you intend to slay her, turn to page 264. I'm quite amused to see what happens if you uh, reiterate it. The mountain elf shrugs his shoulders and says, Well, don't say I didn't warn you. You won't get a chance to change your mind once you're wearing the obedience collar. Follow the tunnel to where it branches and take the right fork. Okay, he doesn't do anything. Uh, so I guess all the way at the bottom we're going to have a... Uh Okay, so that's exactly the same. Uh, where were we? Three or five? Uh, let's slay him. I wonder what you get. You notice, you notice that round its neck, the elf has a strange metal collar which glows in the semi-darkness of the tunnel. Suddenly it stops glowing and turns black. Okay, so you don't get anything. Uh, let's go back again. Nope. Um, let's walk past him. Always lucky. Okay. Let's go left and see what's going on there. You've only gone 10 meters down the tunnel when the ice floor suddenly cracks and gives way under your weight. You fall down into an ice pit, a trap made by the Snow Witch's followers. Okay, we lose take 4 health. You groan with pain and try to stand up. Looking up to see how far you've fallen, you are dismayed to see two ugly faces staring down at you. A rope is thrown down to you, and you are ordered to throw your sword up to the goblins before climbing up the rope. You are trapped in the pit, and reluctantly comply with their orders. 
As you are about to climb, you notice that both the goblins are holding the rope. So I can either climb up or pull hard on the rope and attempt to pull them down into the pit. I pull them down into the pit. How am I going to get out? Yeah, this should be amusing. You tug down hard on the rope, hoping that the goblins are as stupid as they look. Let it go, let it go. Neither of the goblins release the ro releases the rope and both tumble headlong into the pit. Only one of the two picks himself up, the other remaining face down on the ice floor. With blood streaming from his nose, the angry goblin pulls a dagger from his belt and tries to stab you. In the confined space of the pit, you must defend yourself with your bare hands. Alright, we still have the edge. That'll do. You search through the clothing of the goblins and find some Turkish delight, a candle, two gold pieces... Uh, but what was it? Sorry, I lost my place. A candle and two gold pieces which you decide to keep. Both goblins are wearing metal collars around their necks which you cannot remove. Taking the dagger from the goblin you slew, you cut hand and toe holds into the side of the pit and haul yourself up. Picking up your sword you decide which way to head, wondering if there are any more traps further down the tunnel. Uh, let, let's, let's, go, let's go further down. Ooh, interesting. The tunnel continues for some distance before opening out into a circular cave. Another tunnel leads out of the cave directly opposite. You are suddenly met by a strange sight. There are two small pools in the floor with steam gently rising from them. Protruding from one pool is the hilt of a sword, and from the other, the shaft of a spear. The frozen body of an orc lies against the wall, its arm rigid and pointing toward the sword. As you approach the pool, you see a rhyme carved into the floor which reads, Sword or spear, strength or fear, how to choose, win or lose. You stand and ponder the rhyme, trying to decide. What to do? Will you draw the sword out, pull the spear out, or walk directly through the cave into the tunnel opposite? You probably die either way. Uh, let's, let's, let's go for the spear. Gripping the shaft of your spear firmly in your hands, you tug as hard as you can. The spear does not come free and your mind becomes filled with horrible images, making you scream out in terror. You release the spear, but the images remain, affecting your mind. You lose one skill point. And... God, that's a lot of bookmarks. That's a lot of bookmarks. And if we go for the sword... Well, hang on. How can we pull it out? Gripping the hilt firmly, you tug hard at the sword. It comes free with surprising ease. You have chosen the Sword of Speed, and an almost weightless yet strong and sharp sword. Let's rummage through the Orc's backpack. Inside the backpack you find a pair of old leather sandals, a stuffed rat, and a mouldy leaf. Oh, loaf. <laughs> it's probably horribly poisonous. You break into the loaf, you break the loaf in two, and, to your surprise, find an iron key in its centre. Oh, interesting. You gain one luck point. You put the key in your pocket, change your mind by eating the loaf, and walk into the tunnel opposite. The tunnel turns sharply to the right, at the entrance to another cave, from which you can hear a stringed instrument playing gentle music. Your view into the cave is partially blocked by an old, tattered animal skin hanging down over the entrance, but you can see the lower torso of a man wearing green and purple hose and red point... red... purple hose and pointed red slippers. Fuck yeah, let's, let's go walk in. The man you see before you is a minstrel. He is wearing a green and purple checked tunic over his hose and continues to play his lute despite your intrusion. Two large clay plots are the only things in the cave. Let's ask him about his music. The minstrel looks amazed that you are interested in his music. He stops playing and says, You must be new here, as the ignorant scum who live around here, apart from our beloved Snow, Squeak, Snow Queen, of course, will not listen to my music. The fools, if only they knew what fortune I could bring them with my songs. Stranger, I can play a song for you that will heal your wounds. Listen carefully and watch. Later, tell that rabble about it, perhaps they will come to respect me and my music. The minstrel then starts to play a soothing tune, and you watch amazed as one of your wounds heals. You gain four stamina points. Come back again for more treatment sometime, he says, looking pleased with himself. You thank him, and leave his cave to continue along the tunnel. 
in the... Okay, so we're back here. In the distance, you can hear chanting voices. Soon the tunnel ends at the entrance to a large cavern. Kneeling down before an ice effigy in the shape of a demon, with their hooded faces pressed into the ice floor in worship, are ten of the Snow Witch's followers. There are two exits from the cave, one straight ahead and one to your right. If you wish to pretend to be one of the worshippers and walk boldly into the cavern, turn to 300. If you'd rather creep cautiously into the cavern, turn to 283. So this, this is slightly different, because you always turn right if you just go right into the goblins. So let's... Uh, if, I, if I creep, I assume it's going to do exactly the same thing as normal. Run for the tunnel. Okay. Uh, the dart misses you, but the whip curls itself around your left ankle, sending you crashing to the floor. The followers pick you up and carry you over to a circle of ice, dyed blue, in which the effigy stands. Amid wails and wild shouting, they throw you into the blue circle. The effigy immediately jerks its frozen limbs into motion. You have unleashed the power of an ice demon. The ice demon unleashes a jet of freezing gas that shoots out from its nostrils. Alright, we pass the skill check. You leap out of the way of the freezing gas and prepare yourself to attack. Okay, ice demon's not quite so, uh, so tough. Excuse me. The ice demon crashes to the floor in a pile of broken ice. The Snow Witch's followers fall back in terror, afraid that you might now possess the demon's powers. You gain one luck point. Unchallenged, you are able to leave the cave by the tunnel exit. The tunnel ends... Okay, so... You get sent... That way, if you do that. But what happens if you boldly walk in? You probably could end up in the same place. You breathe in and stride confidently into the cavern, hoping not to attract attention. You walk behind the effigy toward the tunnel opposite. Lucky. None of the worshippers suspect that you are an intruder, and you are able to walk through their temple without trouble into the other tunnel. Okay, so the only difference here is that you get the iron key. So there must be something behind that door. Uh, so let's go left, help the dwarf, get the sling, this guy, attack him, get that guy, smash his thing. Now, I think the one with the key is the one on the left. We have the key. The key fits the lock and turns. You gain one luck point. You continue down the tunnel, turning right, and soon arrive at a crossroads. There are no signs of life, either from straight ahead or from the branch to your right, but advancing towards you along the left-hand branch is a strange humanoid. Oh, okay. So that's just the Crystal Warrior. Now, I believe I have the daggers. So let's go and be a cheeky mother trucker. And see if we can get that gate open. Let's be a cheeky mother trucker and see if we can get that gate open. Thank you. The dagger hits the knob and the iron grill slowly starts to rise. You gain one luck point. You waste no time. You run under the grill, turn left and keep going until you arrive at a crossroads. There are no signs of life either from straight ahead or from the branch to your left. But advancing towards you along the right-hand tunnel is a strange human. Okay. So the Dark Elf is not here. Let's see. Where where else were their branches? After you fight this guy, uh, you get the storage cupboard. Then there's the dragon. Then there's the witch. Then there's a whole series of escape bits. Hmm. Well, 
Where could this dork elf be? Let's go to 20. That's just the cave, man. Uh, let's go slightly earlier than 20. 171. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is right at the beginning of the escape. So turning left takes you to the explosive orb. Turning right takes you. So let's go left and just keep going past the orb. And you just go straight back to the chest. Um. So the Dark Elf has to be after all of this crap. Uh, definitely no Dark Elf there. Oops. <laughs> yeah, we beat the Snow Witch at a game. Rather than paying him the 10 gold pieces, let's walk on. Further along the bank, you find a small wooden boat tied to a tree. You look around, but you cannot see its owner. Let's add a bookmark. Let us wait for the owner to arrive. Feeling tired after the strain of recent events, you sit down and rest. Stubb decides to go off to forage for food, and Red Swift begins to make a fire. You drift off into a deep sleep, which your body welcomes. You gain two stamina points. You are woken up an hour later by the ringing sound of clashing swords. You leap up and see Red Swift engaged in combat with somebody wearing a hooded black cloak. When he turns, you realize he is a Dark Elf, the natural enemy of Red Swift and his fellow Wood Elves. You run to help your friend, but you are not needed. With a forward thrust of his sword, Red Swift dispatches his adversary. Whose idea was it to wait for the boatman? asks Red Swift with a wry smile. Refusing to be baited, you suggest that you search through the belongings of the Dark Elf. A pouch on his belt contains a glass vial filled with a green liquid. Red Swift takes out the stopper and sniffs it, but he does not recognize the smell. This must be the health potion. Let's drink it. You breathe in and take a gulp of the green liquid. Feeling no ill effects, you quickly finish it off. Slowly, the tiredness and pain in your body fade away and you feel revitalized. You have drunk a potion of health. You gain one skill point, four stamina points, and one luck point. All right, we are back on frickin' track, Majak. It is not long before Stubb returns, laden with nuts, roots, greens, and a fat rabbit. Using a pan he found in the bottom of the boat, he sets about making a delicious stew, while Red Swift brags about his fight with the Dark Elf. Soon you are all enjoying the nourishing meal, telling each other stories and putting the terrible memories of the Snow Witch out of your minds. You gain four stamina points. Later you climb on into the Dark Elf's boat and push off from the bank, but it does not take long to reach the other side and you set off south across the Pagan Plain for Stonebridge. Okay, we get the old man. I'll pay him for his information. Then we get these bird people. Got lucky. Uh, I forget what I'm like at this point. Okay, I'm fully healed, fully skilled, and fully lucked. Save one point. Okay, come on, I kicked this bird man's ass last time. Thank you, that's more like it. God damn it. Not like this. Not like this. <laughs> Uh, 
da da da. Do not drink it because it's poison. Do that. You see the dwarf. Do that. Uh, take watch. Sometimes lucky. Can you do the stone bridge? Find these assholes. Let's go ahead and give them a good old punch up. Let's go one by two. One. Uh, not like this. Just a couple more hits. One more. Actually, that would have been a hit. Oops, shouldn't have tossed those. That was my bad. That's what I get. Damn it. Same again. I'm killing myself. <laughs> there we go. Right. Yeah, lucky. All right. We're back exactly where we are. <sighs> okay, I drank the potion of health that belonged to the Dark Elf, so I may turn to page 30. The death spell is not working as quickly on you as it is on Red Swift. You help him to his feet, apologizing that you made him read the infernal spell. He tells you not to worry about it. He was as good as dead as anyway, in as, as a slave in the ice caverns. You manage to struggle on for another hour, carrying poor Red Swift at your back. Suddenly his fingers dig into your arm and then his whole body relaxes. The death spell has won. After burying your elfin friend in a leafy glade, you set off as quickly as you can towards the Moonstone Hills. But you are weak and cannot walk very fast. You lose one skill point and one stamina point. Jesus. The ground becomes steeper as you approach the foothills, and you wonder which way you should go to... Bridge continue follow east, following the river into the hills, 46. If you'd rather cross the river by the rope bridge ahead of you, and walk south along the base of the hills for a while, 385. We well, said that the guy was in the hills, so we should probably keep going east. As the, the river narrows and the ground becomes steeper, as you climb you feel yourself becoming weaker by the minute. You lose one stamina point. 